Hey guys, well, I just want to welcome everyone to our uh, Monday, every Monday, first Monday of the month, Asian American Pacific Islander networking event. And I'm so glad that everyone is here to participate in such an important conversation. Um, I'm going to keep my comments short because we have a lot to cover today and, and not a whole lot of time. The time goes by really quickly. And um, so I'm, I'm going to ask my two very good acts of friends. Um, as you guys know, I always manage to rope acts of people into some of this stuff, and they're, they're always so amazing. They have so much talent to give, so we like to be able to uh, tap their wisdom. Uh, so, Belen and Victor, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Belen Majors. i um, been with the AXA family for over 30 years now, starting as a student member. Um, still continuing my passion towards serving our students, especially our students and communities of color. And you see and will hear my passion as I engage with you more in this session and many more sessions to come uh, talking about uh, racial equity and eliminating racial disparities for our students. That's me. What you see right now is what you get. And then my turn. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I actually made a slide to introduce myself. I don't know if we can share that or not, but I'm a 30 year educator in San Francisco and I wear many hats as all of us do. Um, one of my hats is a CAPO hat, which is the California Association for Asian Pacific <laughs> Leaders in Education. Um, I'm part of the Association of Chinese Teachers. I'm part of San Francisco Unified School District. I'm part of the Asian American Administrators Association. Um, part of what helps me with my Asian American identity and figuring it out is being part of the Miseducation Twitter group. And I'm definitely part of AXA. But one thing I really wanted to emphasize is, and I want you to look at my picture now, I'm taking off my hat because I have a disclaimer that this evening, the views that I am expressing are my own and not representative of any of these groups. Um, so I wanna make sure that there's that distinction. And also with CAPL, a bunch of our founding members are in the audience and they have a little CAPL um, insignia. If you can wave all of you, um, but they have a little capo insignia in their background. So um, that's, that's me. I'm really happy to be here. And also the, um, the fact that we have so many people here tonight, people from different backgrounds is really giving me hope because at the end of the day, in terms of addressing this violence, I think we have to work together and we have to work beyond our ethnic groups in order to find peace. So I'm very, very thankful to each and every one of you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. And I always forget to introduce myself. I do this all the time. So for those of you that don't know who I am yet, my name is Margarita Quizon Armolino. I'm the Senior Director of Member Services for State AXA. I also want to give my colleague Adne Mack an opportunity to say hello and introduce himself as well. So Adne? Hey, uh, my name is Adene Mack. I am the Senior Director of Equity Services. And that basically means that I work for Margarita. So whenever she comes calling, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Whenever she says, come on, let's do this, I'm doing it. Uh, and so I'm just really excited. Uh, I have Victor on, on our equity committee and he gave us a preview of today. And I was so inspired and excited um, about tonight's conversation. I really can't wait to learn. Uh, so I appreciate it. And I appreciate seeing all of the lovely faces. Thank you, Margarita. Thank you, Adne, for joining us. Um, okay, at this time, we're gonna move into a quick icebreaker. And again, I have asked um, a very good friend of mine, also the Region 16 AXA president, Leonard Choi. Leonard, take it away. Hi. Uh... Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name, once again, is Leonard Choi, and my day job is a principal over at Palms Middle School in LA Unified. Um, I'm also the region president, Region 16. If I can just ask if everyone can just, you know, I, I love when we go into breakout rooms, but we don't have enough time to make those, like, connections. So if you can just rename yourself, uh, put your first and last name, and uh, where you live, okay? Because sometimes... 
it's difficult to find you in the district. And so just put where you live and maybe that can be another way we can network. So I gave you an example. My name, it says Leonard Choi, it says Los Angeles. That's where I'm at. And then put yourself in gallery view and we're gonna get, I'm gonna give you guys about five seconds to just kind of rename yourself and the city in which you live and put yourself in gallery view. All right? And then we'll get started. This is my daughter here. All right, all right, that was about five seconds. Thank you, I see everyone from Sacramento, Cyprus, okay, Cyprus, Burlingame, Chino, all right. So what we're gonna do is my daughter has a special magical ball she's gonna give me, can I have that ball? All right, here we go. It, it is a magical ball, okay? Uh, it can actually go through a uh, Zoom space, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm going to throw this ball. I'm going to call on someone. Here's an example. I'm going to say, Margarita, I'm going to throw the ball at her, right? She's going to catch it. Make sure you don't drop it. If you do, just pick it up. I want you to think about one word, one positive word that keeps you grounded, focused, engaged during this extraordinary time, okay? So think of that one word. I'm going to give you guys think time, right? We're good instructional leaders. Think time to come up with one positive word. Okay, a few, few more seconds. Awesome. Okay, you have that word, right? Here we go. We're going to do maybe a couple rounds and then, because we're not going to be able to get through all 84 individuals. Um, so just letting you know, and then I'll give you an opportunity to still stay engaged. Okay, so so my word, one positive word that keeps me grounded, engaged, and focused during this time is hope. I have hope, okay? So I'm gonna throw the ball through Zoom space, call on someone, they're gonna catch the ball, introduce themselves, and tell us their word. Are you ready? Give me a thumbs up. All right, hold on, I don't wanna drop the ball. All right, here we go, you ready? All right, Lisa, catch the ball, ready? Lisa, here we go. Oh, good catch, Lisa. Go ahead. Got Unmute it, yourself. Got it. Good. My name is Lisa Yoon. I'm currently a teacher in the ABC School District. Um, what else were we supposed to say? Where I'm from? One positive word now. Oh, one positive word. Mine was hope as well, but since you took that one, I will say mine is students. That's my All positive right. word. Find someone in your gallery view that you don't right. know and, and throw it. Make sure you don't drop the ball, please. It's All right. it Um, I'm going to throw it at Miss Maldonado. Is she still here? She caught it. Good afternoon, everyone. Hilda Maldonado with Santa Barbara Unified, and my word is community. Community gives me hope. Great. Ms. Maldonado, make sure you grab the ball and you throw it right at your camera. You got to call on someone, though. Yes, I'm going I'm going to call Brian Vaughn from San Francisco. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brian, and my word is compassion. And now I'll think I'm going to pass mine, pass the ball to Daisy Chan, Miss Daisy Chan. Grabbing it, my word is purpose. I'm going to throw it to Jenny Lee. Go. Hi, I'm Jenny Lee from San Francisco. I'm a teacher. My word is uh, respectful. And I'm gonna throw it to Victor Tam. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Victor Tam from San Francisco, San Francisco Unified. My word is also actually hope. Um, I'm going to toss this to, let's see, I'm going to go to my second gallery page and I'm going to toss it to Amir in San Francisco. I got it. Good throw. Um, my, oh, I'm uh, Amir. I, I teach with several people here who I see. Jenny Lee is one of them and Brian Van at uh, West Portal. Uh, it's San Francisco Unified. My word is resilience. 
And I am going to throw the ball to Daryl Camp. Thank you for throwing me the ball. My word, Daryl Camp San Lorenzo, my word is humility. And with that, I'm going to throw the ball to one of my favorite people, Bob Lee. Hi, everyone. My name is Bob Lee. I'm from Ripon, California. I've uh, been with AXA for, I don't know, three or four decades now, somewhere around there. Um, my word is caring. I want our world to become a more caring world for everybody. I'm going to throw the ball to my good friend, Shelton Hip. You caught it, Shelton. Well, heck, if I didn't catch it, it would have hit me upside the head. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> good afternoon, all. I'm Shelton. Yep, and I, I live here in Davis. I worked in Sacramento and Napa. I've uh, been an AXA member for 40, 38 years, something like that. But anyway, uh, my word was also hope. Um, I've always used that as a, a place to be when I was a principal, when I was all the above for all the kids I worked with was always hope. And that's what we need today. Shelton, do you mind uh, passing the ball back to me, please? It's all of yours, Leonard. All right. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I know we didn't get a chance to do everybody, but if you don't mind, just kind of go. Let me put this down. If you don't mind just going in the chat box, write your word down. I know you didn't get a chance to share. Not everybody did. Put your word and let's all put it in right now so we find encouragement. Uh, I see solidarity, team, empowerment, responsiveness, community, community, love, student, steadfastness. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that these words continue to encourage you and inspire you uh, despite what is going on during this time. So give yourself a pat on the shoulder, a self-hug if you need. Um, I just want to say thank you once again. Thank you to Margie for inviting me. And I hope to learn and grow uh, in this coming year. Thank you once again. Thank you, Leonard. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, all right. So we just have one more quick thing to do. If Jer Sor Soriano is in the room. Jer, are you here? No, Jer. All right. So we'll come back to Jer. So I think we'll just go ahead and move on in the program then. So uh, Josh, if you could pull up the first slide, what we're going to do is share some statistics with you. That's how we're going to start out our conversation. And I'm going to invite Belen to speak to some of these statistics. If you can move through, Josh, to the slide that starts with the statistics. Thank you. So you will see the statistics of the different types of discrimination that's hurled at our AAPI. So as we all know, discrimination and harassment is not just physical, it's all of these. Um, and sometimes it's, it's, it, we can't see them, you know, but we feel them. As we all know, as education leaders, you know, harassment and discrimination are all in the perceiver and in the observers. And at this time, the, the ground of our conversation is against AAPI. So I, I know that we can add a little bit more to all these types of discrimination based on our lived experience as well as lived experiences of people around us. But look at this, just in the last couple weeks, we've seen a lot of that verbal harassment and name calling, um, going down the very bottom, barred from transportation or having some transportation restrictions. We saw that in Rosa Parks in the civil rights movement. That is still happening. Barred from establishment, how not just barred, but being followed around, so which is a manifestation of being barred from uh, establishment. And it goes even you know, so much as to be coughed at or spat upon or even yelled at or really hurled actual racist words against us. So uh, just look at this. I'm sure you can add a lot more um, discrimination there. Uh, the physical assault, I am sure if we update the statistics would be up there under verbal harassment as we have seen that happening a lot lately. 
and um, and we will see that in a few a couple videos that we will share with you. So this one, all those types of discrimination also show in different places. It's all around us. And, you know, it, it, we cannot deny that this is happening under our noses and before our very eyes, whether we are the object of discrimination or we observe them. So um, this is just making us aware that around us, discrimination, harassment, and racism exists wherever we go. There, we have to be conscious about it. And all of these are making us conscious about it. But the question that we ask is how are we impacted by these statistics? Um, I think this is a no brainer of what the number one reason for discrimination is. It's race. It's that racial impact of what's happening around us. Um, race is, as we know, if we have to define race, is, 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 it's constructed. It's what people have defined it to be against people of color because race comes from whiteness, right? The diversification from whiteness. And then of course, ethnicity. Um, all of these have been reasons. And I say, and I'm gonna say it for myself, I'm not gonna do a disclaimer. These are not suspected reasons. These are reasons based on our own racial lived experiences as AAPI and communities of color. And this just shows us, you know, the different, um, age groups that have been victims of this discrimination. If you look at the 70, uh, 70 and older, it's only 1% on this data that we have currently, but I am sure that as we update the data based on the current happenings that the discrimination against our elder 70s and older are much, much bigger. Um, the gender of the respondents also tell us um, you know, who are the victims of discrimination? The females are mostly victims of discrimination. So it's a double jeopardy for us. If you look at the previous slide of race being number one suspected reason and the females being the object of discrimination and therefore they're the ones responding to these types of survey of, um, of hate against female as well as communities of color. And if you look at the ethnicity among um, the AAPI, um, the Chinese uh, pop Chinese American population always has the highest, especially during these times when a lot of racial slurs and a lot of labeling has been slur uh, has been um, hurled at the Chinese American. But it doesn't mean that all the other um, ethnicity groups of Korean, um, Filipino, Vietnamese, because they have really lumped us all into one Asian group, whether we're Chinese, Vietnamese, Filipino, um, Cambodian, they, they're all lumping us into the one Asian Chinese group. So it's all against all of us, but that just shows us the variations of, um, the ethnicity of the respondents and the respondents also um, pertain to those that are usually the victims of discrimination, harassment and racism. And what do you know? California has the highest in the frequency of discrimination. You would think that we wouldn't be because we're the most diverse state, right? But again, relatively, because we have the most diversity of AAPI, then the frequency of discrimination against AAPI is higher in California, followed by New York, where there's a big population of AAPI also. Um, and in the Midwestern states, you know, where there's a smaller number of AAPI population, then of course the frequency is smaller. So again, it's relative to the size of the population in the different states that were surveyed. We're actually moving into some video now. Um, Josh, if you could hit play on those videos. 
But this is the video no daughter wants to see. Surveillance cameras capturing the moment her 84-year-old dad was attacked and violently knocked to the ground on a morning walk. It's a painful. I, I don't want to see it. It's, it's a broken heart. We see that it's happening, that all the crime happened uh, in Chinatown. Shocking new video released by Oakland's Chinatown Chamber of Commerce shows yet another man knocked to the ground in broad daylight. Noel Quintana lost count of the number of stitches it took for doctors at Bellevue to sew his face back together. I was scared because I, I, I thought I was going to die and nobody helped me. After a stranger on the subway carved a deep cheek-to-cheek -cheek gash, Noel says he did nothing to provoke. He started to kick my, uh, my back. He started to kick my back. And when I'm about to leave, he, 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 uh, he slashed me. Yes. We're going to move into, I'm going to call on Heidi, and she's going to help us through a thought exchange because we want you guys to... Give us your reaction to those videos and how you're feeling. So Heidi, I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, great. I'm going to be able to screen share here. Let's see. So it's great to be with you all today. We are going to participate in a thought exchange. For those of you who have not participated in thought exchange, have your mobile device handy. Um, you can participate in any um, platform um, and, and on any device. You can participate on your iPhone, your iPad, um, but right now we're gonna go ahead and participate synchronously together. And um, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna share the link in the chat as well. So give me one second. Here is the link for the thought exchange. There we go. So I'm gonna share my screen. All right, here we go. So let's let's just um, think about those videos or maybe some videos you've seen before that have been you know difficult for you to watch or really touched your heart in a way that was difficult. Um, we're asking you the question today with the thought exchange, what is on your heart and mind after watching these videos? And um, thought exchange is a discussion management platform that leaders are using to gain unbiased official insights and improve their decision making. It can be um, done in all languages. It's anonymous. So everybody shares, everybody learns without bias. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the timer on right here. Take out your mobile device. If you have an iPhone, you'll want to hover over this QR code right here. And at the top of your screen, you'll see a pop-up, tap on that. And let's see if we can get at least 50 to 60 people to participate. We've got 90 here, so I'm hopeful. Um, what you're going to do is share your thought around what's on your heart and mind after watching these videos. Once you've shared your thought, tap the star button and you'll start seeing the thoughts of everyone else who's here today. And then you can rate those thoughts on how you resonate and how, how you feel about their thought. Do you agree with their thought? Do you not agree with their thought? One star means high agreement, low, low agreement, excuse me. Five stars means high agreement. So let's get going. All thoughts are important. Um, I will play a little bit of music in the background while you're doing this, and we'll just uh, give you some time to take part in the thought exchange. Oh, my music went away. I'll have to play Peter White. Shuffling songs by Peter White on Amazon Music. This is my music of choice today, Adne. Alexa is my best friend. I couldn't find anything about that. <laughs> By the way, you can ask me to keep notes about oh, this. This is so funny. Just say something like, uh, "Note that Freddie is okay. allergic to peanuts." Okay, Alexa. Something kind of calming and soothing for us at the end of the day. Thank you. We have so many participants. Um, this is fantastic. After you've shared your thought, be sure to go to the star step and start rating the thoughts of others. When you rate the thoughts of others, sometimes you gain a new perspective, something that you haven't thought about before. Um, you also maybe can feel some empathy and we know we need more empathy in the world today. Like I said, it can be used in all languages. I 
think it looks like we have most people in. I'm gonna go switch over to the slide. You can see the thoughts as they're prior being prioritized by you. And then you can see the visualization over on the left and you'll see that visualization get tighter and tighter as more people rate thoughts and share thoughts and come together. These conversations are always hard for me. Yeah. There we go. Fantastic. We've got 64 people, Margie. Yep. Everybody's sharing thoughts, which is fantastic. And you know, once you share a thought, you can always go back and share another thought if you'd like. Sometimes that happens. You see someone else's thought and, and you think, wow, I've got something else to share since I read you know, Adne's thought or since I read Josh's thought. We don't know it's Adne or Josh. We, d we don't know that. And we're not rating the thought based on that person. We're rating the thought based on the merit of the thought rather than what gender you are, rather than what um, income you make, what, you know, ethnicity you are, where you're from, how old you are. We're just rating it based on the thought. And you'll see the thoughts will, the top thoughts will change as we move along here. We've got even more people participating. Do you want to keep it at the four minutes, Margie? Okay, we'll keep it at the four minutes. We got five, four, three, <laughs> Two, one. So you can see um, your thoughts. So this resembles this audience today here, this group. And I'm gonna to switch to the next slide. And so um, what we're going to do is, um, whoops, our top thought just changed. So our top thought today um, that resonated with you all today is protective. Um, here it is, we're gonna show, we're gonna project it out. Um, this is a sensitive subject and it is anonymous, but you know, is there somebody here who wrote this thought who might want to speak to it, unmute and speak to it a little bit, or somebody else who might may want to speak to it? Um, protective, want to protect our families. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this, a brave soul? Sure, I will. This is Shelton. This has been an ongoing issue. I mean, it's just magnified in the last, you know, in, in most recent times. But this is something that we've dealt with. I grew up in Stockton. And in Chinatown in Stockton, and we were doing it back then as 16 and 17 year olds, we were protecting our senior citizens in our community because of being attacked, robbed, beaten, whatever it may be. We were doing this. This was, our group was called a gang, but it wasn't, you know, it was a gang, but we were protecting our families. We're back to this again. We have been, we've never left that. And so I, that, word always comes to mind because it's something I've lived with all these years. Thank you for sharing, Shelton. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing. That, that's beautiful. Um, let's see right here. I think we could all probably agree with this thought, um, probably why it rose to the top. Is there somebody who would like to speak to this? Um, this thought? I think it speaks for itself. And let's see right here. The third thought today, I feel so upset by the actions and protective of those being targeted, especially the elders. Yeah, that, that, that also kind of speaks to what you just said, Shelton, I would believe. Is there anybody that would like to speak to that? Okay, here's one that has to do with education. Margie, would you like to read this one or Victor? Sure, I'll read it. Beautiful. Thinking about what we as administrators need to do to prepare teachers and staff to hold space for students to unpack the community violence. Staff may not be prepared with their own understanding of AAPI racism history and may cause harm. Wow. Anybody? want to speak to this, that maybe the person who wrote this, and um, this is so important. Um, yeah, um, I, hi, I'm Grace. I'm with San Francisco Unified School District. I see a lot of our people here. Um, just thinking a lot about, you know, obviously this is painful and 
and um, a lot is coming up, but I, I wonder a lot about how we're gonna prepare our staff to be prepared to hold space for this because it will show up in our students. And I think another thing I put in was, you know, just talking about anti-Blackness within the Asian community and how that shows up and how that might show up with our students. And it's not a matter of if it's when. And so our staff prepared to be able to kind of hold that space and discuss that it's not an, a matter of, you know, one or the other, or that there needs to be an increase in policing, but what about community interventions and how do we address community violence? Actually, if I may, I'm going to jump in at this point. Um, Grace, <laughs> even though we work in the same same district, honestly, I didn't plant her there to, <laughs> to segue to the next section. But um, I think when we, when we look at this, when we look at those videos, there are so many emotions. And all of these emotions are absolutely valid. Our, one of my mentors used to tell me, you know, people's perceptions are their realities. And it's, you know, when we face something that's painful, I think it's important to recognize those feelings, to identify them, to name those emotions. But one of those things that's so deeply important for all of us is not to get mired in emotion. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you an example. Like, you know, I've been married for Oh, 30 some odd years. No, is it 20 some odd? I've been married for a while now. And within a marriage after that honeymoon stage, you know, like in these years, you know, there's, there's tension and there's disagreement. And sometimes we get so passionate in what we believe and we argue and we fight. But if we just stay locked on and enraged all the time, we're not going to get beyond that. But what's really nice is um, when we are committed to each other and we want to move forward together. So, and you know, this is an AXA event. And as an AXA event, you know, many of us are educators. And we know, like in our school communities, most of the challenges that we face are not simple ones. In fact, they're op the opposite of it they're complex. And within this complexity, within this complexity, there are multiple reasons for why, for why things happen, right? It's not as simple as we want to think. So, um, you know, after we look at this, I do want to move us to the point where we can, we can take a look at um, the next question. Why do we think these hate crimes are happening now? Is it really that, uh, do some of us think that our black people or non-AAPI people coming into Chinatowns and targeting our most vulnerable, most precious um, treasures? Like, are they saying, oh, this is, their, this is their most vulnerable, most precious people, we're gonna hurt them or is it something else? So in our next segment, we're going to talk about um, why is it that we think these things are happening? Yeah, and, and actually we're gonna uh, use this word cloud to kind of launch into our next segment, which would be small breakout sessions. Uh, so our first breakout, Belen, I'm gonna let you introduce the first yes. breakout. Yes. So Thank, thank you, Marty, and thank you, Heidi, for getting us into this word cloud of having our, our participants put in the words that resonated with them upon um, seeing the statistics as well as the videos, because that's where we're going to move into. You picked one word to describe how these videos made you feel, and now we're going to um, go into the breakout um, rooms and talk about why you picked that word and why, as Victor said, you know, it's not enough for us to pick a word and share our feelings. We need to be able to rationalize why and then uh, move into the next segment of moving 
from the feelings part. So let's go ahead and um, move to the small breakouts. Um, and then every room where you join, you should be able to select somebody to report out after. Again, the prompt is, what was the word that you um, contributed, that you thought about, uh, that resonated with you after seeing the videos and perusing the statistics against um, AAPI? Yeah, so while Josh is um, moving everybody into breakouts, while he does that, whatever happens in the background here, just going to repeat the breakout session question. And so it is, if you had to choose one word to describe how those videos made you feel, what would that word be and why? So that's going to be the discussion, and we're going to have about 10 minutes to talk about that in small groups. Um, and then again, Every group should have a group reporter. So you guys figure out who that's going to be for your group. Because when we come back as a large group, we're going to ask your group reporters to kind of share what the conversations are. So, all right. Does that make sense? Great. Okay, let's break. Yeah, I think we're back. Belen? All right. So um, in my group, we had a very... A rich conversation about the word and why and we move from feelings to actions and call to action but we'd like to have some of the groups of some of the breakout rooms just share out I know that you appointed a reporter we're not going to have time to have all the groups share out but go ahead and please volunteer your group if you're ready to report um, just unmute yourself Any brave heart out there? We ask you to come with strong hearts and brave hearts. I could go. Thank you. Um, I was in the group um, and uh, we, uh, we actually, three of us express anger. Um, I had expressed that same anger and it was really at the injustice of the treatment of Asian Americans in this day and age in 2021. Um, we also had somebody say it was extreme sadness that um, there is um, this happening uh, in the 21st century. Um, I am from San Francisco where the largest number of incidences occurred and it is just unjust to think that um, we, we have um, not enough voice among Asians who have been targeted uh, that would uh, open up the ears and action. We need action, not just lip service from those that um, have said that they, for the first time have heard about racist acts against Asians. This is not true uh, in um, besides asking our people power, especially in legislature, uh, um, at the federal, state, and local levels, we ourselves have to uh, push ourselves for action to make sure that uh, these racist acts are brought to justice. Thank you, Jenny. I was in your group, so thank you for sharing that. I think Ben was going to share something, unless Ben was in Jenny's group also. Uh, no. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we, we had some really rich conversation, but the first thing that came to my mind, the word was, uh, it was a term, white supremacy. And really, if you think about it, at the, the core of these issues is that, is white supremacy. There's this idea that as Asians, we've been bestowed this title of the model minority. Right, and that term in and of itself is a racist term. So if you unpack that term and, and you call someone a model minority, I mean, what is what is the statement there? You're you're better than the other minorities, or you're not like the others. So that in and of itself is racist. And so that is the point where we need to take a stand. And when we when we wait until we see these flare ups, because the roots of racism run so deep that we see them flare up in different moments. And then we go, oh my gosh, how did this happen? Like it's Donald Trump's fault. He called it the China virus. No, that's not the issue, right? Because if he called it the England virus, we wouldn't see people attacking uh, the individuals that are most near and dear 
to the English community. And so it has Lisa brought up in the Asian community, who is more revered and honored than our elders? I mean, after our elders pass away, what do we do? We have shrines to them. We make offerings to them. We pray to them. I know in, in, in all of our indigenous spiritual perspectives, in all Asian indigenous spiritual pr perspectives, whether it's Shintoism, Buddhism, whatever it might be, we honor and, and we give respect to our elders when they've passed away. So to do that, that act, something like that to our elders, that shows how deeply those, these roots of racism go. So we need to go deep. We've gone surface level. We got to go deep to peel back the layers of the onion and really start to dismantle these systems that embolden people to think that these acts are okay. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Marjorie, do we have time for one more share before you move to the next piece? So is there another group that's willing to share your rich conversation on your what resonated with you on the videos, the word you chose and why? Uh, for group six, one of the words that came up, um, yeah, some words that came up was like worry, protect community students and uh, um, elders, but our conversations uh, um, ended with talking about um, the focus on sc school reopenings, but the lack of conversations at the mm -hmm. at the district level around um, the the violence that our communities are yeah, experiencing, and how if we're not prepared for conversations around yeah bullying, social. Yeah, emotional things are yeah, connected to this. How, um, how if we're not careful, then you know, like we could be like adding on layers of pain. Thank you, Sonny. So I, I think we're ready to move on to the next piece, Margie. Yes. Okay, Victor. Now you can introduce <laughs> breakout session number two. I'm so sorry. I jumped the gun before. Um, <laughs> And I got a little confused with the thought exchange, so I apologize for that. But yes, like, you know, in unpacking this, I really love what, especially what Ben mentioned, the complexity of these problems. And, you know, as school leaders working with school communities, we know how complex problems can be. And watching these videos, seeing the statistics, it is, it is very um, anger inducing. Um, I, there's a quote that popped into my, one of my social media feeds this morning from Ursula Le Guin, who is, um, who's a science fiction writer. And she wrote, anger continued on past its usefulness becomes unjust, then dangerous. It fuels not positive activism, but regression, obsession, vengeance, self-righteousness, corrosive, it feeds off itself, destroying its host in the process. Right now, like we're feeling a lot. This is one of the few opportunities we have to engage with this topic, but we also want to move forward and in moving forward, it's important for us to consider why, why is this happening? Um, I think the question that we're going to explore in small groups, again, will be, um, why do we think these hate crimes are happening now? Why do we think that these hate crimes are happening now? And afterwards, we'll also have a chance to debrief as a big group um, so, you know, if you can find someone to be prepared to share out, of course, we can't have everyone share out with such a big group, but maybe someone, choose a person who has the birthday closest to today. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Victor, you want to? Sure. Um, thanks, Margie. Um, welcome back to the room, everyone, and really eager to, to have maybe two or three groups share out maybe some of them, what you're thinking of the why this has been happening. 
I can share from our group, um, but Lynn meant, um, volunteered me too <laughs> from our group. But um, we talked that someone mentioned in the larger group, uh, and my name is Kathy, by the way. Um, I'm from SoCal. Um, someone had mentioned in the larger group stating that there's different layers, um, and we talked about at least two of the layers. Um, one of them being the pandemic. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, things, uh, the challenges that come from the pandemic, and and not making excuses because the people are going through different emotions. And so um, in the other layer that I had mentioned was that um, I'm a little bit disappointed in um, people who hold leadership um, positions or power uh, or positions of power, because we as parents or as an admin or as educators, we teach our kids to do right. And if they do something wrong, they, you know, they, they are, you know, they, they reflect and they apologize for it. And so there's a lot of people that I just feel like, you know, you're in this leadership power or position and you need to, words matter, whether they're negative or positive. And people need to take accountable, accountability for their words and know that there are followers either way. And so that's the disappointment that I see. And so that if you're a celebrity or a leader, like I said, um, you have to know that, that you have a responsibility that comes with that position. Thanks, Kathy. Um, I'd like to share um, what my group offered um, regarding the question about why this is happening and why is this happening now. Um, uh, some comments included that this has always been happening and that, you know, racial tension and issues of race, um, human relationships right now are at the forefront of our minds really because I mean, it's everywhere. It's everywhere and it's, it's, it's very important to address, especially during this time where we're um, limited with our social connectedness, right? Like we are all behind a screen and this is the best we can do. Um, on top of that too, you know, everything is on video. Everyone has a cell phone and everyone has, um, you know, uh, pretend photography skills <laughs> or even professional. Um, but, you know, now that there's so much more surveillance, um, a lot of these issues or a lot of these incidents are coming to light. Um, another word that was um, commonly shared amongst the group was fear. Um, people are scared right now. This pandemic has really challenged, you know, uh, a lot of different communities, you know, struggling with their basic needs with, you know, just income loss, education loss, language barriers. I mean, it's just been an, a, you know, a very ch challenging time for, for everyone, humans, um, no matter what community. And these, and fear evokes other emotions, right? Like we're, we're, we're humans like to, we're very often outcome oriented and we want to do something about whatever's going on in our bodies. And so it can come out as, um, sadness, it can come out as, you know, anger, it can come out as hatred. Um, and so until, you know, there's more understanding and more learning about what's been happening, about racism, about systemic oppression, about, um, you know, what su white supremacy has done to us, the, the rhetoric that was used in the prior administration, giving permission to, to um, you know, that modeled hate crimes, right? Like that model hatred until there's that space to really reflect on what's been going on and our responsibility to be part of that healing, um, that fear just continues to turn into anger and pain and, and you know, make poor choices. Um, and it's just a stressful situation. Um, also that, you know, un 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 unpacking this question, a lot, you know, as humans, we, we've been really conditioned to put things into categories and, and other boxes. And another person had mentioned, you know, the, the topic of othering, right, is that we are so accustomed to putting things into different rankings and different orders. And where do I stand in this whole hierarchy of, of things? And it's not a hierarchy. We are all a community, right? And so it's like, as we're trying to absorb all these new teachings it's like how do we unprogram ourselves to think that way so that we can receive this new information and to also teach our students and the next generation better um and so yeah thanks thanks to my group for being vulnerable um, and being courageous to share that 
And thanks for this opportunity. Thanks so much for sharing, Jenny. And, um, you know, in the interest of time, I'm looking at the time and I know that Margie is like, you know, we got to end at 5.30. I'm gonna actually going to um, start us on transitioning. And I'm going to ask you, like, today is a conversation. It's uh, uh, Belin and I are not facilitating. Otherwise, I would have to take a more neutral stance. So I'm actually going to insert myself here and ask you um, to follow me for a minute. I'm just going to try to tie together some of the thoughts that people just shared out that number one, we are all in a pandemic and it's a lot. And this pandemic has not hit each one of us equally. So I was looking at some statistics. Um, in May 2020, Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, his net worth jumped. $24 billion. At the same time, Amazon employees, if they called in sick, they would lose their jobs. And around that same time in Hazeltown, Pennsylvania, in one of the Amazon fulfillment centers, there were 64 cases or more of COVID-19. And um, they were about to eliminate an extra $2 an hour hazard pay to the warehouse workers. In January 7th, on January 7th, the Time Magazine talked about the pandemic and how there were record US savings rate. That in March, the records, the savings rate for US um, uh, yeah, Americans was 12.7%. But in April, it jumped to 32.2%, but not everyone. They also said in 2019, according to the Federal Reserve Report, four out of 10 Americans would be unable to pay an unexpected $400 bill out of their, $400 um, bill out of their savings. So the disparity is huge. And when I think about this, I also think about um, how it ties into our histories. Like next we're gonna move into a timeline, but Asian Americans, and I'm gonna focus on Chinese because I'm most familiar with that. The Chinese face discrimination and hatred and violence. They have in the past and they continue to, but the Chinese also came here by choice. When we contrast it with the black history, they were forced to come here as slaves. They faced Jim Crow laws, they faced redlining, and a lot of us are in school systems now. Can we really say that our school systems treat African-Americans equitably? And how real is that school to prison pipeline? So when I think about cultural perceptions, blacks are often seen as threats to our safety. They're often seen as violent and criminals and poor. And for Chinese, we're portrayed as weak, effeminate, easy to step on. And then you add in Trump and what he said, you know, the China virus, the Kung flu virus, uh, Kung flu, and he just put targets on each one of our backs. And then on top of that, all, a lot of these crimes happened around the Lunar New Year time. And a lot of these elders carry cash, they don't report crimes. I mean, one report said, I think there was an elder who was robbed of $2,000 cash so I wonder how we look at the systems, the systems that we live within, whether it's the government systems or the societal systems that we're all part of. And how about the stimulus checks that people are still waiting for? And to some of us, we may think $1,400 isn't a whole lot of money, so what? But again, go back to that statistic where some people cannot pay for a $400 bill out of their savings if it came up. 
So people are desperate. So there's a lot of layers and complexities to think about. I think a lot of it is rooted in white supremacy culture. And I wanna to emphasize today, from what I see, the enemy is not black people. The enemy is not white people. The, the enemy is the system. And until we step back and can see that and recognize it, we are left fighting each other and we're gonna waste time and energy and blood and it's gonna hurt us in the long run. And some people benefit, just like I think um, Kathy mentioned just now, words matter and where's the responsibility? Not everyone is held to be accountable. Some people can say really bad things and even create a system where people do bad things, where five people die in our capital and still be considered innocent. There's something wrong with our system. So, uh, sorry, I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna hand off to Baylin. Um, I apologize for that, but you know, I'm gonna hand it off to Baylin because she's gonna introduce the next section. Actually, actually I'm gonna I'm yes. gonna interrupt. Victor, thank you. This is why I love having you because you're so passionate, you know, and that's exactly the kind of people we need to have sitting around this table to help us, you know, move the conversation forward. I'm actually going to um, do do one thing real quick before Belen takes over and shares the timeline. Uh, so Jared Soriano, if you could unmute yourself and give us a little why AXA, why should administrators be members of AXA? 60 seconds, thank you. Uh, 60 seconds. Well, um, for many things, uh, you know, we, we get involved in this ad, ad master's program. We learn foundation ethics, finance, leadership. We go, we go on, we go to our site roles and we, 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 we master school organization, structure, facility operations and, and logistics. But to me, it wasn't enough. I, I needed to go deep under because I needed to know what, what I was working for <laughs> in terms of programs and, and equity, advocacy, equity and, and so forth. So, AXA to me at an earlier time as, as an admin became very important to me. Uh, why? Um, it, it, it really instilled upon me to become a bit more effective um, um, leader. Plenty of workshops, conferences, symposiums, academy programs that I've been associated with over the years. And, and you learn a lot. You pick some things up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I became more consciously aware of, uh, of legislation and how that relates to education, race, you know, systems in place in our schools, as, as, as Victor mentioned. Uh, it made me keen aware of the books out there and the, and the authors out there and their messages. It, it didn't stop. Um, uh, 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 networking, networking, uh, you know, in regards to uh, connecting, exchanging resources and information. I wasn't the only person that was going through these trials and tribulations and becoming an effective leader and facing those hard questions and having those... Those, those difficult conversations with my teachers, with my parents, even with my superintendent. Uh, I, I, I was it. The buck stopped with me as, as a principal. Um, so, you know, you know uh, learning from you all, um, experiencing these situations, um, you're putting me there. I, I don't live in Chinatown. I've been there. I, I, I love the culture. But when I hear things like this, it, 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 bring, it, it uses that, that empathy that I can that I resonate with. And I'm at a school published that unfortunately doesn't have Chinese. We have Filipinos and, and Mexican Americans, uh, but I can relate to that and I can learn from that and, and as a whole. Um, learning from my peers. And then I learned from not just learning from my peers as principals, but man, I connect with superintendents. <laughs> I got them on Twitter. I connect with them. I call them and I'm like, hey, how do you feel about this? You know, I got a lot of D's and F's out here. You know, in this pandemic, you know, what's going on in your school? And don't lie to me because I'll, I'll do my research or I'll call somebody else. And so I joke around. But that's one of the big reasons why I, I got an accent. I'm currently the president-elect Salinas, Region 10 in the Salinas Charter Valley. So I'm, I'm going to be taking uh, an extra role. Uh, uh, I've been, this is my 28th year in education. And, and, I'm, and hopefully I can last a little longer more to see us go through these, uh, these, these difficult times and, and have our uh, students, um, you know, have a better voice out there, be connected, be educated, and break those cycles of poverty, that prison line that you've been talking about, Mr. Tam, as well. All races, not just 
you know, uh, and closing that and closing that achievement gap. So sorry, I took 96 seconds. Thank you, Jer. So if you're not a member of VAXA, we hope that you find value yes. as this is an example of one of the many benefits of membership. Um, so we'll be reaching out for some, uh, for those of you who are not members, we'll be reaching out and inviting you to join. Okay, Belen, I'm going to throw it back to you. And Josh, if you want to pull up the timeline so that Belen can go over it really quickly. And so I'm, I'm not going to talk through the timeline. What I'm going to ask you to do is to listen with your heart, view with your minds and heart and soul, because we will ask for your reflections afterward. There were comments that said this has been happening even before. And let's see how true that is. The, the timeline slides will go from only two to three seconds. So again, listen and view with your hearts and minds and souls. Thank you, Josh, two to three seconds per slide. Thank you, Josh. So as you can see, that timeline went through decades since eight, the 1800s of what had been already happening against AAPI, not just the Chinese, not just the Japanese, the Filipinos, the Vietnamese, the Muslims. Um, this is not new. And so having gone through the slides, I'd like to be able to identify which of those slides resonate most with you. And then this becomes an opportunity for us to tell our personal stories, insert us in, the, in those slides. So talk about in the breakout room, the slide that resonates most with you. And secondly, your personal distant or most recent experience of hate against our people as you personally lived it. Again, it's not the story of your mom or dad or your elders. It's not the story of your child, unless it affects you. It's your own story. So what resonates with you? And then share your distant or most recent hate incident against you or your family. Thank you. So can we go into the breakout room? Yeah, so we'll have five minutes for this breakout, you guys, real, real quick, and then we'll come back and try to wrap it all up. All right, great to see everyone back. So we're just going to do a quick wrap up. Belen, you want to you wanna call some people out? Um, I think I want to call on David because David spoke so well about um, the timeline that resonates with him and a very recent incident that we all would need to hear. David Ying. Thanks, Belen. Um, okay, sure. Uh, I was recently golfing with a uh, family member, and, you know, just like a Father's Day golfing event with about eight people. And we were mentioned, we we're talking about the economy. And this person had mentioned, well, if these illegals weren't taking $600 a month from us. And I looked at the man, I said, well, you know, first, I think illegal is a little bit, uh, you know, discriminatory. They're called undocumented. And I want you to know that our family came from, or was undocumented for about 15 years. And uh, now, you know, I'm naturalized now and my family has, my mom and dad both have their green card. Um, and if it weren't for our family, my sister, who, you know, this man is now related to, um, if it weren't for this family, my sister wouldn't be part of your family. And my sister was the only person that has been, that was born here in America. And uh, he proceeded to say, well, 
you and your parents can go back to your country. Uh, we'll just keep your sister. And then I was telling Belen that when something as racist as that happens to you, you kind of sit here and in shock. And really, I think it happened about at the 11th hole and it didn't really start to sink in until about the 18th hole. And uh, maybe it was given my culture, but I did not speak up and I drove home. And as I was driving home, the anger just got worse and worse. And, uh, you know, to this day, every time I say it, I start shaking. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Thank, thanks for listening, guys. Thank you. And I did share in the chat that these personal stories need to be shared um, and maybe insert our own personal stories within the timeline because, yes, it happened a long time ago. It's still happening and now it's surfacing back. It won't stop unless we give, we break the silence and give our movement a voice. Thank you, Margie. You want to move on to the next? I know we don't have much time and I know there's much thoughts and feelings that are um, coming out of this. You know, may I jump in? Oh, may I jump oh. in real quickly? I think um, not just voice these and get these, <laughs> get these stories out, but what, what positive actions can come of it? Um, just, there was this guy named Joseph, Jacob Acevedo. He was a 26 year old in Oakland. And what he did was he put out on social media, he was out there escorting Asians, elderly Asians, um, to make them feel safer. And then, you know what, within a matter of days, there were 400 volunteers who were doing the same thing. And it became, um, what is it, Compassion Oakland. And their motto was something like, I will walk with you so you are safe. So there is positivity and we can work together. We can work together and find more positive ways to break these chains of violence. Thank you, Victor. Um, okay, so does anyone else wanna share anything? Anyone else? Okay. Well, I, I think- It's uh, one thing, Margarita. Oh, sure, Peter. So it, it's just, uh, for me, it, it's really, uh, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who shared. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a white male, you know, I mean, a lot of uh, growing up, you know, I, I had no idea, no clue. And if you guys weren't sharing your stories, uh, I, I, I still wouldn't. So I learn every day. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here and sharing. Victor, do we have that slide? Or can you share that, uh, Margie? Are we, we do, in? yeah. Jo uh, Josh, can you share the Kappel slide? And Peter, thank you for that comment. We always welcome allies, and we appreciate that uh, there are allies in the group today who um, want to learn and grow with us. So thank you to, to all of you that are allies for us. All right, Victor, yeah. go ahead. Oh, great. So I want to make a quick plug for AXA because as I was thinking about this earlier, you know, we're talking about systems. We're talking about huge systems that have been around for a long, long while. That speaks to why these racist and hateful acts have happened over time, over history in this country. And I alone am not gonna make that huge of a difference. The difference happens when we unite. We're always stronger when we're together. And AXA is one of those communities and one of those organizations where we have a voice as, as educational leaders, we can be stronger together in advocating for something like not testing during a pandemic or something like this against violence in the API um, community. Um, another vehicle is that of CAPL. We want you to continue this conversation. And right now, one of our founding members, Shana Henry, is going to speak a little about CAPL. Good evening, everybody. My name is Shana Henry, and I'm a proud AAPI principal in Sacramento. Um, first, thank you, Margie, for continuing to create these spaces for us. And thank you, Belen and Victor, for your brave leadership to guide this conversation. And thank you to everyone for being here. Um, as Victor, Victor mentioned, the conversation doesn't stop and shouldn't stop here. CAPL stands for the California Association of Asian Pacific Leaders in Education and was created out of the passion to connect us, 
support us and lift others up while we advocate and support our students. So we're still getting the word out and we're still really new. This is a grassroots effort. You tell a friend and then they tell a friend and so on. So today amongst all of our friends, we are extending an invitation to all of you. Um, on the screen, you'll be able to see how to connect with us. We invite you to join us and keep this conversation and advocacy going. So we encourage you to join our group me where we, we really talk, we share, we celebrate and really just have a safe space to explore what's next. So we're soon gonna have opportunities to connect including conversations on Clubhouse if you're there, um, but you can also find us on Twitter at Capital One. Um, so we look forward to connecting you. So let's not stop the conversation. Let's keep it going. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. And I didn't mean to infer that one person does not make a difference because going back to this whole organization in CAPL, CAPL is an offshoot from all of these networking activities that Margie started within AXA. And Margie as one person had that, that vision for leadership and opened it up for us. And without it, we wouldn't have CAPL. So we're very grateful to Margie. And the other piece is that, again, I'm gonna close my, my portion with how I opened. My hope, my hope comes from seeing all these people here today of different backgrounds coming together and having this conversation and, and trying to find a way to work together so that we're not mired in that emotion, but we're gonna work together towards positive solutions that really break down, break down these, uh, these um, institutions and these systems that are oppressing us. Sometimes I feel like we don't see it because we're the fish in the water, but once we start seeing it, we're in a more powerful place. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Margie. Thank you, Berlin. So I, I just want to add to what Victor said, you know, he's really talking about the solidarity that we all need to be enjoined with our BIPOCs, our um, Black Indigenous pe people of color, not just AAPI. And so we enjoin everyone and uh, repeating what Victor said at the beginning, you know, really get out of that anti-Blackness among us and among all the other groups of color. But I also want to plug in as March 1st is the beginning of Women's History Month, Women's Her Story Month, I should say, um, that I would like to plug in uh, AAPI Women Lead, which is uh, headed by Dr. Connie Wan, um, one of our own, and I'm sure that you know of her and have heard about her. And we do, in solidarity with all the other communities of color, um, engage in this work and we move from the feelings that we talked about today and the thoughts that we talked about today um, and the talk that we had today into action, into the anti-racist mode of really acting. So there's a, we need to share stories, we need to talk about it, engage in these conversations, but beyond that, the work has to be anti-racist and solidarity. And anti-racism happens only when we move toward action. And the action does not have to start from our political leaders who we want to make accountable, the action starts from us. We are leaders ourselves in our own world, in our classrooms, in our departments, in our districts, and in our communities. So um, we give ourselves that grace of feeling and thinking and then really exploring our beliefs. And then from those beliefs come our actions. And so I, along with Victor and, um, and Margie and all of Capel engage us into more of that anti-racist work and go beyond the talk and walk the talk that we've had today. But with a lot of reflection, with a lot of strong heart and open minds. Thank you so much for engaging with us. 
Yeah, thanks you guys. So we, there's never enough time for this conversation. We're over again. Um, at one point we'll get really good at this and we'll tighten up the program. But we hope that you found that the information and the conversation was helpful and that you know that you have a community to go to here at AXA and also at CAPL. Again, continue the conversation. We certainly won't stop here at AXA. You'll, you'll see us uh, the first Monday of every month, we're gonna be getting together and um, look for that email. And with that said, I just want to thank again, Belen. I want to thank Victor. I want to thank Josh in the background. Josh, where are you? Just give him a big wave. He's, he's our tech guy and he's been with me since the very first day I started doing these webinars back in March. Um, and of course, thanking everyone who shared a story and, and contributed to the conversation. So thank you guys. Have a great evening. And I look forward to seeing you at the next event. Thank Bye. you, everyone. All right, see ya. Have a good one.